else you crazy but I only wanna be with you You think I'm shady cause I'm out here trying to make some moves But it ain't like that, just know that I'll be right back I'll give you all my time just to let you know you're mine It ain't nothing, promise I'ma do it all to give you something This love I got is only for you, you're my comfort My future husband, I'ma give you all my heart, yeah, all of it, yeah Glasses in the air Toast to a high power Cause what you tuning in to right now Sit down It's Lito's happy hour Lito's happy hour, this is where we're set Rolling uncut, we giving real facts Educating, entertaining all the people And when it come to podcasts, it ain't nothing equal Giving people knowledge, they can put in action all the way authentic, we ain't never capping Exclusive interviews, cause we ain't never lacking The other state is talking and we bout the action huh. Glasses in the air Toast to a higher power This is Lito's happy hour So, while everybody's coming in, we're going to go ahead and get started. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell everyone a little bit about myself. You still play a little low, baby. Um, for the ones that don't know me, don't know much about me, whatever, my name's Kevin Jeffries from Dayton, Ohio. Um, the reason why I decided um, to do this for, for us guys, you know what I'm saying? Number one, um, you know, it wasn't much, uh, well, me and my wife, you know, I got married in, the, in uh, <clears throat> September of last year. And um, I instantly said, you know what, as soon as I get married, I want to start looking for um, like support groups for guys. So as soon as I get, I got married, I started looking and I didn't see any at all. So I was like, dang, like, you know, we start brainstorming together, me and my wife. And um, she decided to do something for, <clears throat> for women um she has her organization called me first and you know what i mean it's a women's empowerment group that she does um and she just recently had her first event and it was great a lot of people came in a lot of information was given um and you know what i mean like you know we put our heads together we prayed about this and um i decided i said you know her her event went so good i wanted to put something together for the guys so that's how this came you know came to fruition um you know what I mean? So without my wife, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm a behind the scenes kind of guy. I like to, you know, play the backfield. You know what I mean? I'm not somebody that likes to be in the limelight much, even though I did used to be a rapper. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> so, um, but no, um, with a lot of prayer and, um, you know, just, uh, you know, belief, I, I decided to do this and I reached out to three awesome people. And, um, you know, you're going to hear from them today. Um, three awesome brothers, you know what I mean? Blessed guys. And um, I truly believe that this is going to change some lives. Like I've been, I've been saying this for the last month. It's going to change some lives of people. And, and this isn't going to be the only one we do. You know what I mean? We're going to do some other things, too, together. And uh, it's going to be great. You know what I mean? So um, without further ado, um, the first presenter um, that I want to I want to bring out for y'all is my man, my brother, uh, Lamar Lewis. Um, he's going to talk to us about uh, mental health. Uh, let me tell y'all a little bit about Lamar. Um, Lamar is a, a licensed um, associate um, consultant or counselor and um, is a dedicated advocate, author, and agent of change. Um, as a community-based practitioner, he works with diverse groups 
including individuals living with psychiatric disabilities, people in recovery from substance abuse, um, at hope youth, he doesn't like the term at risk, um, and then through outreach initiatives, public speaking, coaching, and mentoring, um, he develops the next generation of leaders, um, emphasizing sound, mental health, self-mastery, uh, reflective leadership, and holistic wellness. Um, he is an alum of Wittenberg sure. University, um, and he received his master's degree in clinical uh, mental health counseling from Argosy University. His career spans over 20 years with experience as a mental health therapist, consultant, and human service professional. He is also a featured expert um, for organizations like Region 4 Public Health Leadership Academy, which is hosted by Emory University, um, the Ruby Neeson Diabetes Awareness Foundation, Total Access Foundation, Witten Wittenberg University, and others. His lifelong mission is to leave the world better than he found it. This is my brother. You got the floor. Uh, I didn't think I was going first, so thank you. <laughs> can everybody hear me? If you hear me, just give me a thumbs up so I can see some faces. I see my, my grandmother came in here, so I have to do well. That's awesome. <laughs> if I don't, I can't get no good cooking when I come when I come back home. <laughs> That's dope. So I got to make sure I do good so I can get some of Meemaw's cooking. But with that being said, man, I, I, peace and power to everybody who's striving. I appreciate you all for the opportunity. Um, I've been on goal for this whole week. So um, we're just going to make this do what it do. I believe I got about 30 minutes, so I'm going to make sure I do that and hopefully give you all some time back. Um, and hopefully if there are any questions, I'm sure my good brother, Kevin, who actually your grandma was down the street, is down the street from my grandma. That, that's how close we are as far as proximity. So, um, you know, I, I applaud you, brother, for, for taking the opportunity and seizing the moment um, for just creating a space for us to talk about these topics that come up all the time but we're not often given the space to to discuss so i want to just you know make sure i give you your flowers while while you're here i'm gonna let everybody you know make sure i do that i'm big on that um you to share my screen I mean, if not i can just you know i can you know i can go off top of the dome i speaking of music by yeah, the way share it. <laughs> you, know? you can share it bro you got me I'm sure now. Okay. Yeah, cool. sure. Cool. Be, 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 be. Great, 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 great. Okay. Let me know if you all can see it. When you can, I'll put it in slideshow mode. We good? Yes, sir. All right. All right. So your mind matters. Understanding barriers impact of collecting well-being. We're talking about this for men, right? Um, the concept of this, when the concept of this is really talking about the areas in um, Black life in general, Black male life specifically, that keeps us from engaging in our mental well-being. All right. So we want to discuss uh, the cultural and systemic barriers related to access to services, the differences between behavioral health and mental health resources and ways to increase our wellness. And uh, let me make sure I got my timer on that because I don't wanna, there we go, all right. Oh, and I can send, um, Kev, I can, if you want, I'll send you like a one sheet of everything that we, that I talk about so that you can, you know, send it out to the participants later on. Okay, cool, bro. Cool, cool, cool. So quote to ponder. I always start off every presentation I do with um, a quote to set the tone. And we're talking about well-being. Um, Zeno, a philosopher, stated that well-being is realized by small steps, but it's truly no small thing. Um, that is something that I feel like we often overlook what we can do over an extended period of time versus what we want right now. One of my mentors once told me, and you hear me use the term mentor a lot, is that we underestimate what we can do in 10 years and overestimate what we can do in one. So that's always been a guiding principle in my life as a way to just always adjust my thinking towards more long-term um, 
strategic planning as far as how I'm operating my life. So it's something to think about as it relates to your well-being. It's not something you're going to get done in one day. Small steps, but each small step you take towards your mental well-being, your physical well-being, emotional, and spiritual, which we'll cover today collectively, um, is a big step. So I appreciate everybody for, for coming on. So briefly, difference between mental health, behavioral health. You hear these terms used interchangeably. And, and, and let's go to the chat. If you've heard of the term behavioral health, put a one. If you heard of the term mental health and not behavioral health, put a two. If you heard of both, put a three. I just kind of want to see one, three, one. We have some ones, two. Okay, three. So a lot of y'all have heard of have heard of both. My cousins in here too. Hey, cuz. Um, I've heard of both, but oftentimes when we hear the hear both of them, we're not really sure what they are, right? So we talk about behavioral health. We're talking about the connection between behaviors that impact the health and well-being of the whole body and spirit, right? How you eat, your drinking habits, exercise, and physical health, how that all impacts each other, right? Behavioral health includes mental health and substance use, um, and it takes, talk about the whole spectrum of the health as it relates to your physical, mental well-being. Mental health is included within behavioral health, but it's very specific to, somebody's drawing on the uh, screen, um, it's very specific to your mental health. Um, we talk about psychological resilience, and we're talking about subjective well-being. And, and WHO is the World Health Organization. It says mental health includes subjective well-being, perceived self-efficacy, autonomy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What does that mean? Quite simply, we're talking about how our mental health impacts our behaviors, right? How we think impacts how we behave. And so while they are two distinct and separate entities, they interrelate with each other. All right. So I want to make sure I'm very clear on that, that you'll hear people use them both interchangeably. But there are people who are specific in dealing with behavioral health and people who are specific in dealing with mental health. All right. So it's, it's good to know what you need so that you're able to get the resources that you need. All right. So some of the systemic barriers and cultural barriers that we face and we're just going to go across. So with the, I'm gonna use my pointer. This will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, this will be five, this will be six. After I explain each one, I want you to click on the one that you most have difficulty with, all right? So first of all, stigma around mental health. How many of us on, in, on this call have ever heard the term, oh, he's crazy or she's crazy? or I don't need no medicine, somebody on medicine, they crazy, right? When you talk about mental health and you equate it with crazy, that instantly takes you away from trying to receive help, right? Because it has a negative connotation. That's what stigma is. And we think about mental health. We think about how we talk about people um, who have mental health issues. You know, that there's an old adage in the black community where it's, it's the uncle that's kind of locked up in the back of the house and never comes out the room because he has mental problems, right? Or you have a family member who, you know, they, they put away in a personal care home or something because they have mental health concerns, right? So there's a stigma around mental health, especially in the black community, um, even still, even though some of those barriers are being brought down now, especially with the pandemic, there's still a broad um, issue with stigma in the black community as far as getting mental health services and if nothing else talking to a therapist okay the other thing i just mentioned is a lack of resources and access to mental health services we have financial resources um therapists cost money we spend a lot of time money and effort to get these degrees and these licenses and certifications and all that continue all the stuff we have to do to stay um within compliance with our regulating guidelines you know, it costs money. People want to make money off what they do, right? Um, but in our community, we realize for many factors, there may be some difficulty to lack of access to financial resources, right? There might be some difficulty with lack of insurance. There's a lot of uninsured people in our community. It's just a lack of education related to behavioral health services, mental health services, and what we can do. There are a lot of us in our community who have this gift, right? Have the skill that they've acquired but 
without the access to them, we can't connect to our community, right? Another thing that we do within this is that we often put people in their wrong, in a wrong slot. So what I'm saying is, um, and I know we have a pastor on coming today and, and another gentleman, but sometimes unless a pastor has been um, trained in counseling and trained in, in Christian counseling or whatever the case may be, they may be ill-equipped to deal with certain mental health concerns. But we go to our pastor first or we go to our grandma or whomever who may not be equipped to answer some of these questions or deal with some of these problems, right? So we put people in, uh, have them operating out of their gift, out of their scope, which causes can cause more long-term harm than good. Um, history of African-Americans in the medical system. This also has played out with the COVID-19 pandemic and the um, the, the, the vaccination issues and all that kind of stuff. We have a very strong distrust in the African-American community with the medical system. And to be fair, we have justified reason for that. You can go to Tuskegee Experiment. You can go to um, Henrietta Lacks. I mean, we can go down the list of all these different things that have happened to us historically. And some not so long ago that have a gigantic apprehension towards access and mental health services because of what has been done to us historically um, in the medical system. We also have a messiah complex generally, what we're you know called the savior complex, where we feel like we have to um, fix everything, right? And that kind of goes hand in hand with my next point, um, where I don't, I can't get no service, I can't take care of myself, I got to take care of all these other people. That also plays into the strong black man, strong black woman myth, where we put ourselves last for the benefit of those we take care of, right? We will. Well, you know, I, I can't, you know, man, I, I can't talk to nobody, man. I got to make sure my son do this. I got to make sure my daughter, I got to make sure my wife is good and vice versa. I got to make sure my family's good, whatever the case may be. That keeps us from taking care of ourselves, which leads to, again, further issues down the road. So these two myths kind of interrelate where we have this Messiah complex where we have to fix everything. And then we say we can't get help because we have to take care of so many other people. The last thing, and I don't know how many of you all remember, I remember being a kid and hearing about the story of John Henry, and I was always, I remember him beating the train and winning, and that was it. I don't remember, I, when I came down to Georgia, I realized he died after he beat the train, and that really struck a chord with me, so I did a lot of research, ended up meeting the gentleman who came up with this concept called John Henryism, where you use hard work as an adaptive coping mechanism, right? So we talk about adaptive coping me me mechanism. These are things that we do to help us manage daily stressors in life, right? So maladaptive coping mechanisms, people might say drug use, um, gambling, things like that, things we do to cope with life that may not be healthy. So we look at hard work as an adaptive coping mechanism, which it is, but what we're doing is we're working ourselves to death. Instead of dealing with these problems, we would rather just work, 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 okay? So stigma around mental health being number one, lack of resources being number two, number three being um, the history of African-Americans in the med medical system, four being the Messiah complex, five being a strong man, strong woman, strong black woman, strong black man myth, and the last one, John Henry is in the sixth, Put your number in the chat of which one you struggle with the most. And I'll start it off. Let me find this chat thing. Five. Yep, I'm going out. Yeah, I'm, I got I'm, I'm with you on that one. Five and six. Yep, y'all sound like me. I'm, yep. Yep. That's a lot. That's a lot, man. Five and six, for sure, for sure, for sure. And none of, and none of these answers, unfortunately, surprised me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, we've been taught that we have to be three times as good as the next person to get opportunities. We have to, you know, we're, we're, no matter how hard we work, we're not going to achieve if we don't excel and all that kind of stuff. And what that does is that creates within us a uh, narrative that if we don't work, like, Forget pain, we got to work. Forget pain, we got to grind. We got to hustle. I can't sleep. I can't, I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it. But what ends up happening is you put, you shut yourself up for failure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if you look at all the measures, all the data, Black men, we die first. We have more health problems. We're 
there's so many other things that we have at our that happened to us because of us working ourselves to death which is interesting to me because there's a myth that we're lazy i don't know any lazy black man but i'm just going we're not going to do that today you, you didn't you didn't have me come here for that one Jack. uh kev I'm, I'm gonna keep that one to myself <laughs> all right so what are some ways we can increase our wellness all right know thyself what do i mean by that right you know you you know what you reasonably can do, what you can't do, right? And if you don't know, you need to spend time finding out who you are. We do that through meditation. We do that through prayer. We do that through journaling. We do that through having a, a spiritual connection to a higher power, or whatever that may be for you, right? Um, and if that's not what you have, something greater than yourself might be volunteering or giving back or something, right? But we have to take time to be with ourself in a a healthy way and engage our own internal dialogue and asking ourselves who are we where are we going and what directions we're taking right oh a you know anything like that when i mean a clear intention i simply mean a clear direction a clear purpose of where you're trying to go right that doesn't mean we're not open to other means and other directions that life may sway us to right it just simply means that i know the direction i'm going in and i want life-oriented choices that direct me towards that perspective right um enforce boundaries this is something that a lot of us have a lot of us have a lot of enmeshment in our lives with our family, our families are real close. And sometimes we don't have that able to enforce boundaries in a healthy way, even at work, right? Um, I would tell my staff to take a day off and I wouldn't take a day off, right? Things of that nature. You might tell somebody else um, to do something you wouldn't do. And, and the way to look at it is like this. What would you tell your best friend? Your best friend came to you and said, hey man, I've been working 60 hours a week i'm stressed out stuff is messing up at home and what would you you know what do you suggest i do you the advice you would give that best friend give that to yourself that's how you enforce those boundaries right sometimes we treat other people better than we treat ourselves so that is something that we, we definitely have to work on is enforcing those boundaries build your tribe what does that mean right your family is your tribe but you were born into that. We didn't choose our family, right? So we can't do anything as far as who our family is. But who you choose to build with is completely your control and your choice, right? There are members of my family I love to death. I can't spend a bunch of time with them because it's detrimental to me. There's nothing wrong with that. That don't mean I don't love them. It just means that I have to love you from a distance. And I say that it's cliche, but it's very true. Right, we build our tribe. This is intentional. I'm gonna continue to use Kevin. We have been intentional about standing in each other's lives over the course of the past what almost 20 years that we've known each other. Right, it's been intentional. He's a part of my tribe. I know if I need him, I can call him, and vice versa. Right, who are the four to five people in your life? Who who's your starting five? Who are people you can call right now who give you the same energy you give them? Right. So build your tribe, be intentional, back to about setting a clear intention, being intentional about who we have in our life, who we giving energy to, and are we getting something back from that? Not in a selfish way, right? But just in such a way that we're able to have people that support us in our times of need, especially for most of the world on their shoulders and trying to do something for everybody else. You might wanna have four other people in your circle who can do some of that for you as well, right? Which goes to my next point. Protect your peace by any means, any means, protect your peace. You need to be able to protect yourself from the, the stressors that you can. There are some things that we choose, right? Which is a way to protect your peace as well. We make a choice. I've chosen to be a father. I've chosen to be a husband. So the, the responsibilities that come with that are on me. I can't blame my children and my wife for my choice to be in their lives in the way I am, right? A lot of us do that. We make choices 
but we don't want the consequences that come with that choice because our choices are personal, but our consequences are collective. And so protecting your peace, when I say by any means, Malcolm X is one of my avatars, somebody I look up to, right? He said, by any means, he's trying to get freedom. I'm talking about protect your peace by any means, whatever you have to do. There's a lot of love in the word no. I'm going to say that again because I don't think y'all caught that. There's a lot of love in the word no. That's another way to enforce your boundaries. Sometimes it's okay to say, hey, man, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You need to borrow 50? I ain't got it. I can give you 20, but I ain't got the whole 50. Protect your peace, right? Because ultimately, when it's Hold on, y'all. Bro, you still there? We might have lost Lamar. Looks like he's having some issues. Hold on, y'all, one second. He's still in. He's still in. He's just frozen. While he's uh, getting that fixed, y'all, uh, for the, for everyone that came in here recently, um, do, do a mental health check in with y'all. You know what I mean. One to ten, where we at? Where we at? Listening to to Lamar give us dropping these jewels. Where we at? Type it in the chat for me. I just want to know where y'all at. Okay, seven from Jason. Yeah. Mar, are you back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I apologize, man. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. I was just about to tell you we, your internet was going in and out, but you was dropping uh, through though. So just that's all right. Okay. Proceed. Proceed. Okay. My my apologies, y'all. I apologize. You know how technology be. Um, yeah. we good. Uh oh. Uh oh. You still in, bro? You just have it's just technical difficulties right now. Okay, my mental health check in. Okay, so we got a seven, we got a six. My guy Cliff, 10. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. All right, he coming back. We're gonna get it, we're gonna get it together, y'all. Y'all know y'all know the devil working in mysterious ways. He's trying to stop this information, but we're not gonna let him. We're going to keep it pushing. We're going to keep going. We're going to get this right. He coming back in. Class in the air. Toast to a higher power. Because what you tuning in to right now is Lito's Happy Hour. Lito's Happy Hour. This is where we say.